Okay, so there's this library I want to show you that claims to have fixed TypeScript and here it is in an actual production project in the startup that I'm coding myself and I'm using this library since a few days and they actually really like it and they claim to have fixed TypeScript and that's a bold statement to make. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but it is definitely uh, really helpful. So it's called TS Reset and there's a bunch of examples that I want to go through with you. It's really new. As you can see, it just came out like a week ago, but it has a steep incline in weekly downloads. So right now it's over 11,000, which is pretty insane. And it's done by a fellow YouTuber who does a lot of um, TypeScript videos, basically exclusive TypeScript videos. Um, so that's why I even gave this a shot because I like his videos. And let me walk you through some examples on what exactly this does. So let me go into the desktop and initialize a new project. Let me zoom in a bit, make dir, and then we'll call this, I don't know, TypeScript. Just create a new TypeScript folder, cd into TypeScript. And then here we're gonna say yarn init-y to initialize a new project with all the default values. And then right next to the ridiculous shit folder, we see the TypeScript folder. We can go into here, open that with VS Code, and then get started with this new package. Um, so we can close the debug console and then yarn add or npm install if that's what you want. This package right here that I've just showed you, it's called add total typescript dash, uh, slash ts dash reset. So we're just gonna copy paste that, install that here. And to install this, it's in, I think it's the simplest installation I've ever seen in a package because literally what you have to do is add one line of code. So in here, let's say uh, typings.d.ts and also include that one line that we need to import right here. The import add total dash typescript uh, slash ts dash reset and import that here. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the examples. So first one is that it fixes um, arrays. So we can say const filtered array is equal to, and then we can just pass it in array like one, two, and then undefined. So we have an undefined in our array. As you can see the type of the array, and let me zoom in so you can see it more easily. The type of the array is number or undefined array. And normally um, when we say dot filter and then pass a Boolean, what should happen is that undefined would still be in there. Now let's comment this out to disable it and also restart the TypeScript server. I hope that will make it clear. Yes. Oh, wait, what? I, I don't know why this happened, but normally this would be a number or undefined array. So the undefined would not be filtered out. Um, and that's an example they give right here. And with this library, it's pretty handy when we comment this in then it's just a number array and we can work with it as if it were a normal array and we wouldn't have to check for undefined anymore inside of it, which is really handy. Um, however, that's not the best thing. One thing I've noticed, especially in working with this in a full stack project, is that um, fetching is way better with this because whenever you fetch something, so let's say const res is equal to then fetch some URL, it doesn't really matter and we probably want to await that. So const get data is going to be an async function. And then there we await this response right here. And why doesn't this work? Wait, what? Oh, this is some weird TypeScript thing. Let me just uh, add TS, ignore that. It doesn't really matter. It's just something that we need to configure in the TS config. It's of no importance right now. Um, the important thing is that this is a response and the data would be res.json normally, right? And we also need to await that. And right now the data is unknown. And that is because we have this package right here installed. Now, if I were to remove this, man, I swear this is trolling me. I'm gonna get rid of the typings.d.ds file because you can see it flashing. It just flashed any for a second there. Yeah, okay, so right now it's any and then the filtered array. Okay, so this is what I meant earlier, right? It just assumed the package was installed anyways, but normally this would be number or undefined array. And with a package, it was just a number array. So it's semantically correct TypeScript. And then in here data by default is any, right? So whenever you fetch some data and then turn or await the rest of JSON, they get the data back from the response is typed as any. And therefore you can say, you know, const whatever is equal to data dot whatever. And all the bad things that are inherently, um, sub you are subjected to inherently when you're working with any uh, type. And what this library allows you to do is, uh, let me typings.d.ts. 
let me bring it back in here, import it, and you could see right away property whatever does not exist on type unknown because instead of being any, if I restarted the TypeScript server, then you should be able to see. Yeah, TypeScript seems to be kind of bugging out, so this is actually inferring this type as unknown, the data type, but when I hover over the data type, then it says any. I don't know why that is, but uh, normally this would be just typed as unknown, as you can see. And what that forces you to do is actually validate the type. So you can check, you know, if whatever is an instance of some oops, instance of um, some class, this doesn't exist, but um, you need to check if it's an instance of some class, It's if it's a certain type, and you need to validate this type in order to work with it, which is really good because then you can harvest all the benefits that TypeScript inherently gives you instead of working with any, which defeats the whole purpose of working with TypeScript um, in the first place. And the same thing goes for JSON parsing, which I think is really neat. So, you know, we can say const um, username is equal to local storage dot get item, and let's say the item is called username. That's how you would get something from local storage. However, this would be a string or null, and this would be a JSON string, right? So if we were to say const data is equal to JSON, oops, is equal to JSON.parse, and let me disable GitHub Copilot, this is super annoying, username, we want to parse that, then what we can see is the data is any, and that's not what we want. And that's one other example of this library right here. Um, it's right here, const result json.parse, and then, in, you know, the json string that goes in there. So in our case, that would be this username right here. Um, it seems to be kind of bugging out, but right now this would be typed as unknown. As you can see, when I write dot hello property hello dot... Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Property hello does not exist on type unknown. That's what I wanted to make clear. So yeah, this hovering right now is not accurate. This is actually unknown, as you can see right here. And that also forces us to validate the type in TypeScript at runtime, um, you know, depending on what this username is right here. And so we can work with it after that in a TypeScript way. Now, if you're new to TypeScript or for any reason don't want to use all of these, I think they are kind of best practices in TypeScript um, because they allow you to work in a more TypeScript way. You could also import just parts of them. So you could say at total TypeScript slash TS dash reset, then something like uh, slash JSON dash parse, for example. And you could just import um, parts of this package. So right now you'd only have the JSON parse. And if the TypeScript would actually properly update in this really slow VS code I seem to be running like that, then you would not benefit from any other things than what you imported here other than the JSON parse. So if I were to remove that, then we would actually benefit from everything. So also what is inside of the array is a number array. It's built very modularly. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but you can import certain modules from it. And I think that's really handy if you're new to TypeScript and don't want to I use all of that right away. However, one caveat that they also state on the npm package is that you should use this for applications and not for libraries. And the reason being whenever you use this in a library, then you're also forcing the people that use this library to work with it. And they don't know why their fetch is now being typed as unknown or any, um, except if you specifically state it in the package. But I mean, how many people read that? Right, so you should use this in your applications and not force other people to also use it if you include it in your library. And that's all. I found this really handy. It's a rather small package, rather simple, but um, I really enjoy working with this in a production setting. Um, this is the startup I'm building. It's really paid off. Just the unknown forcing me to actually type it out. I think it's a really good practice um, if you're somewhat familiar with TypeScript. Okay, that's all I want to share. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want, you can try it out. I'm going to link the NPM package below. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.